Hello everybody and welcome back to the Avengers of Sindo the Hunters. Last we left off we were about to confront Titan and Naval Hard. Oh that was fast. <laughs> So let's get right into it. Dang it, he left. That was a good sage. I wanted to commend him. Now I'm sad. Uh, let's continue on. Uh, sorry I haven't been. We didn't have anything all last week. Well, we had the Destiny 2 story and all that. But it was just like, I wanted to recover a little bit. And here's the thing, we, I'm looking forward to 2024 because we're getting the first Descendant, we're getting so many stuff, 
I will actually have a whole lot of content that I can cycle through for Thursday. So Thursday might be on a cycle, or it might just be whatever I'm feeling that day. And so one day I so on thir one Thursday I might be feeling, hey, let's do the Adventures of Cinder, or hey, let's do the let's play some Avatar Frontier. But for the most part, Thursday will be kind of random on I'm ever I feel. Or if we get an update on Thursday for like Warframe or something, or like we get some kind of new mission, then I will stream that and then maybe switch over to something else. But I did want to be kind of upfront with you on that. So that's what we're going to kind of be doing from now on. It's going to be just. Thursday is whatever I feel at the time. So, yes. Uh, let's see. Where am I going? Okay, let's go there. Okay, so there For the most part, I, uh, I'm also wondering, I'm also going to probably do a little grinding on Pandora av Avatar off screen so I can at least get some of the cool stuff because I don't want y'all to see me having to grind for stuff off screen, on screen. Uh, ah, there she is. Did I not tell you she would return safe and sound? The deed is done then. Tighten this no more. Good. There has been enough tragedy this day. It has been like that since he regained consciousness. We believe he can hear us, but he has made no attempt to respond. He is almost certainly still in shock, but we cannot discount the prospect that he succumbs to the primal's influence. So that proved to be the case, he must be put to death, like any other troll. Such is the Alliance policy, yes. You have the right of it. But we must not rush to conclusions. After all, we once feared that Yastil's followers were beyond reason, and many have since laid down their arms and accepted Isgard's peace. We can but watch, wait, and pray. The bees that mourn in the heart of the world. There is not to be gained from dwelling on an eventuality over which we have no control, much less one which may never even come to pass. Let us tend to more immediate matters, informing Commander Bowen of Titan's demise, for example. You may be certain that we will be glad he will be glad of the news. Would you be so kind as to Yeah, uh, a lot of things are happening. We got the Tokyo Fan Fest, we're going to be showing off more Dawn Trail and all that, but I'm looking forward to it. Ah, so, ah, you're a sight for sore eyes. When the others came back without you, I feared the worst, but they said you had matters well in hand. All settled then, is it? I'm glad to hear it, but not half as glad as my men would be, believe you me. Regardless of whatever, whether or not he was summoned properly a primal's a primal, 
and there ain't a soul in the maelstrom that hasn't lost a friend to one. Don't get me wrong, like, we were all prepared to do our part, but we weren't so naive as to think we'd live to tell the tale. Thankfully, of course, it didn't come to that, which my friend sounds to me like cause for celebration. Now, I know you, uh, you lot have places to be, but why not stay the night? We be on to raise a glass to the triumph return of Titan's Bane. Uh, if only I was truly a Titan's Bane in Destiny 2. <laughs> Who goes there? Oh, it's you. Forgive me for straying from the camp. He hasn't been feeling too welcome, to say the least. I thought a change of scenery might do him good. But, alas. so quiet out here. The stars spread out before us, beckoning across time and space. Dawn may banish even the darkest night. How bitterly beautiful, those words. I should be stronger for all my experiences, yet my heart aches more than ever. I never understood why Grandfather gave his life that day. I thought that if I came here, I would find the answers I needed. But when I finally laid eyes on the land he sacrificed everything to save, saw firsthand the bickering, the pettiness, I was disappointed. I was angry. I could not fathom how these people were more deserving of his love than his family, than me. Nevertheless, I had to believe he had good reason. I was determined to uncover the whole truth of the Calamity and, perhaps in so doing, find my own purpose in this sea of chaos. My travels have been enlightening, but I cannot say that I have enjoyed them. I have lost count of the many petty crises that I was helpless to resolve and of the people whose actions I could not understand. There were others, of course. Good people. People with whom I felt a kinship, whose lives I could not save. I found myself asking what it was all for. Why try if I was doomed to fail in the end? But then I recalled Grandfather's words to my father, years ago, before he left Charlayan behind forever. To ignore the plight of those one might conceivably save is not wisdom, it is indolence. We must all protect that which we hold most dear in the manner of our own choosing. We have to try, do we not? Of course it's one thing to try and another to do. There were times while I was tracking the warriors of darkness when I faltered, when I was afraid. But then I thought of my brother, of Uri Angers. Oh, pray forgive me. This conversation has been rather one-sided, hasn't it? Mayhap you could recount some of your adventures in Ishgard. Girl, I feel where you're coming from world is like you got the pettiness of man and you're just wondering like how the heck does why did the heck my family sac a member of my family have to sacrifice themselves for this pettiness yet at the, at the same time you realize your that person loved the world so much that he wanted to protect that which was his protect that which he loved he wasn't just doing it for the world, he was doing it for a better future for you, for your family, and for all of them. 
it's just the world got the benefit of him protecting you all. I traveled far and wide with two companions who were very under some rather unique. Uh, I'm gonna say, give her some embarrassing tales about Alphino. We had no clear memories of our life in the hinterlands, having returned to the motherland as infants. Nevertheless, I am quite familiar with Master Matoya, as is every Charlene. I should like to speak with her someday. It would not surprise me if Alphino's recent maturation was at least somewhat due to her sage guidance. I would never tell him this, of course. But there have been moments when I've caught myself thinking of him as an elder brother. Oh, that's so the sweet. hopes and dreams of so many rest on your shoulders, Warrior of Light. As long as the sun rises, we can but carry on. For the sake of those we hold dear. To what end dost thou cling to the tainted gifts of the mother? Every tool has its purpose. Even this. Well, what is it? The seeds sown in Vilbrand have been plucked from the earth and left to wither. Alas, Titan's demise sufficed not to drive the kobolds to deepest desperation. What did the man in white have to say? That we are to proceed as he did first set forth. Well, that's easy for him to say! It's not his bloody world on the brink of destruction, is it? Be thou well reminded that with an end to Ishgard's unrest, naught now remaineth to preoccupy the Scion's thoughts. And thus may they devote their every energy to thwarting thee and thine. I foresee only greater difficulties ahead. Foresee? Are you sure you don't welcome them? I'm starting to think you might hold a candle for your old friends after all. Pray do not mistake mine intent. I but look upon the path which lieth before us with due trepidation. Shouldst thou be of like mind, pray consider then another course. For the power to invoke the ardor belongeth not unto the Assians alone. With thine own hand strike down thine enemy, the so-called hero who would see thy home lost to light. Do but this, and thou wouldst at a single stroke disrupt the all-too-delicate balance of this realm, plunging her straightways into chaos. You do realize what you're suggesting, yes? To ignore the plight of those one might conceivably save is not wisdom, it is indolence. The words of my teacher, and a creed I hold close to my heart. Very well. Draw her out. We'll make it quick. It shall be done.
What good a creed one cannot uphold? What hurts soothed? What lives saved? O oh, hapless fool, what hast thou wrought by thine own hands? Minfilia, my friends, I shall not now beg your forgiveness. Full deeply, though it paineth me to walk it, I shall not stray from my chosen path. As Moonbreeder remains steadfast, so too shall I. J being the one who it's basically like all right I'm gonna walk that dark path so you don't have to basically let me be the one be the devil while you get to stay and be the angel and that's something I've always liked about Arianje is that he's not afraid to play that bad guy or do what needs to be done to forward the ambition of the Scions. And he's done it not once, but technically twice. And it's so good that you get to see him have this internal struggle of, yes, he knows this is the wrong... He, this way of going about it is wrong, but yet at the same time, they need to force this to happen, and he doesn't like it. It's like, he does not want to do it, but he knows this needs to be done, and that's what I love about Orianje as a character. Apparently, during the course of their respective investigation, both came across crates which had once borne a scar seals to foresee that someone in the capital has been very busy indeed. Accordingly, the Temple Knights have launched a full-scale investigation, so Emmerich believes that it's only a matter of time before the culprits are found, but we shall have to wait to see. In the meantime, it seems only prudent to look in the recent of the other tribes in case they too are flushed with this guardian crystal. And with that in mind, I suggest we pay Orianji another visit. Wait. Where is Alize? Who was here a moment ago with Gabu? Okay, let's see. No. So she has to be up front. Yep, there's Alize. Ah, uh, let me guess. It's time to leave, isn't it? My apologies for disappearing again. If it's any constellation, I have already packed my things. How is he? Brother, Commander Bolin. Something tells me you are not solely here out of the concern for his welfare. But to answer your question, there has been no change. He will not speak or eat. I'm not even sure if he slept. If he did, he seems none the better for it. He just shuffles about with the same expression on his face. You will look after him, won't you, Commander? Even with every kindness, he's still in there. I know it. Beneath the anguish and despair, he's still fighting with all his heart. He deserves to be given that chance till he comes back to us, till we know for certain what has become of him. Aye, 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 aye. You need to worry. If he hadn't risked his neck to warn us and help, you secured the better part of the crystals. It's gonna turn out a damn sight worse than it did. We'll soon not forget that, and nor would the Maelstrom command. I'm sorry, Gobu. I truly am. You should never have been made to. And 
and I know I can't possibly understand. Anyhow, there is nothing I can do or say. The pain, the anger, the helplessness. Hold fast to the memories of better times. Remember them as they were. And when it hurts so much, your heart feels fit to burst. Let it burst. Let it burst and fill up again with your love for them. And never, ever forget. No longer do I. I, I will remember them and you. Thank you. Have faith, sister. Your words have reached him. In time, he will recover. And those who orchestrated these events will be made to answer for their crimes. A thousand times over, I... Oh, there will be a reckoning. I think that's the uh. Hold on, I, I'm just checking out what this quest is because I'm just like wondering what the heck this is. Whenever there's a plus thing, it's just like, oh, uh, what's this quest? It's something important. Right, this is the uh Beastman quest. Ah, okay. Cause I'm just like, what the heck? And then I remember oh right, 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 right. This is Beastman quest. So uh sky, stuff this guy. Time to go talk to Orion J. like all the way inside <laughs> um, but yeah there's some other things I've been looking at also I've been wondering for those who do like destiny how you've been enjoying the season of the dragon we have heard the glad tidings from old Gormamo Gormamo 
my friends, by the grace of the twelve and most valiant efforts, the people of Linza, Linza may rest easy. I should like to think so, yes, though we failed to prevent the loyal crabs from manifesting. We did succeed in weakening him, enabling our friend to dispatch him before the warriors of darkness could make matters worse. This was by no means the unmegetting success, but it will have to suffice. Then let us speak of another matter, one of which weigh heavy on my lady's mind. Without this request, I sought out the Jira. Jiron oracles that we might better understand the aims of the warrior of darkness. Though the Ocopus use of allegory death defy any single interpretation, the oracles paint a most disturbing picture, one of worlds parallel to our own, apart yet link, reduced to ruin with every umbral calamity. Seven times have they succeeded, then of ten and three, only six worlds remain. Aye, all is as Lady Mephilius spanked, spoke unto thee, spanked unto thee, <laughs> Sp spanked unto thee. I <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry I'm losing it over this word, but it's just funny to me. As for what's becoming, becometh of these reflections when they and the source are rejoined, for they are flesh undone in humble fires, each soul slender length to her call, to flow unto the endless sea that to endure it as one and none. That, that if the warrior starts to see, then everyone in the world will die? In essence, I, the verse speaketh of a reunification of the flesh and subsequently returned to the life stream. However, this fate may yet be preferable to the alternative. For if the first were to fall to transcendent light in the manner of the warrior darkness described, it would give way unto a void wherein none may know either life or death. Far better to die than they reason, for in death there is life, the essence of a soul which returneth unto the source may be born anew. Say! Such as, such at least, is their belief, I surmise. If that is true, then, gods. If that is true, then gods. No one should ever have to be made to make such a choice. Ere we speak further on this subject, I will share with thee another recent discovery. This would seem the sizable shipment of crystals have been delivered into the hands of a certain Algonian parties. Algonians? Strange. Do you believe this to be the work of the same Iscardian smugglers who supplied the beast tribes? I know beyond a shadow of a doubt. At least thou wondered at their motive. I would remind you that Ashians do did once attempt to bring about the summoning of Ralga. The individuals who took receipt of these shipments are refugees belonging to a group devoted to the al cause of alchemy or Megan liberation. It may also interest thee to know that their Iskarian suppliers appear to be none other than the remaining the remnants of Elenai, Elene's Rosa's network of spies. Surely you jest, and yet it is no, not so surprising. Bequeft of leadership and hunted by the Alliance, 
I can well imagine of such villains being desperate not to conspire with the Athens, assuming they even know or care who their new employers are. All of which is irrelevant. Forgive me, we must seek out the resistance group, which receive the crystals without delay. Cinder, Alze, will you come with me to little Almigo? Yes, of course. I should like to hear what they have to say for themselves firsthand. May you ever walk in the light of the crystal. Alize being like, hold up, wait a minute. Something ain't right. Alphano, Alize, Cinder, are you three listening? Good, I have tidings. The Temple Knights raided the smugglers' warehouses less than an hour ago. Cursory interrogation of the prisoners yielded confirmation that they were in the employ of, and I hope you're sitting down, a man in black robes. Then you have them, and the crystals too? What do you remain? I, regrettably, it was seen they dispatched one final shipment in the hours before we struck. Kids was bound for Leo Alamigo, we were told, where it will be received by members of the local resistance group. Since Sir Emmerich men no longer have need of my services, I have made mine to head that way. As do we. By happy coincidence, we learned of the shipments, but a few moments ago. Ha! <laughs> and there I was thinking I might have finally been one step ahead of the warrior light and her little helpers. Ah, wait a moment. There's more. And I defy you not to be surprised by this revelation. The leader of the Asgardian smugglers was formerly in employment of one Aline Rolaline, the infamous, infamous Ivy herself. Once again, Thancred, I fear I must inform you that... Thancred, with whom else have you shared this information? About the smugglers? No one. As I, as I think I mentioned, the raid was less than an hour ago. I was planning to con contact your stolen next, but there's some, there's someone else you should. Uh, but there is there someone else you would have me notify first? No. There isn't. She's starting to put the puzzle pieces together. All these squares are going to turn into a circle. The Archons was one of grandfather's most dedicated peoples and spent as much time at the Livier estate as we did. He practically a member of the family. Truth be told, I struggled to recall a day from my childhood where I did not see the three of them laughing together. If this continues, I may have to raise the, ma raise the matter. Later, though, little Ogmigo awaits. Here we go. Also, for those of you who probably have heard the, uh, new voice actor for, uh, uh, Has Been Hotel, I want, I want y'all, I want, no, what do y'all think of it? I mean, I think the new voice actors are good and all, but it's just like, eh, there are some that I'm going to miss. 
to more pressing matter right then to more pressing matter since we have no idea when Thancred might arrive I suggest we see what information we can gather in his absence I pray that someone will be willing to speak with us about the resistance When we were free. Uh oh. So, to review, we are remarkably informed that members of the Alamigo resistance operated here have taken receipt of several large shipments of crystal, our task being to assert who and why. Given the size of the shipment, I find it hard to believe that anyone here could be wholly unaware of the resistance movement. The challenge, of course, will be finding individuals who are both able and willing to share the information. It seems sensible to divide our forces. Cinder, why don't you question the residents in the eastern half of town? Alize and I will do the same in the west. And afterwards, we can rend rendezvous here to share our findings. Let's do this. But like I said, has been hotel. And I'm looking forward to that actually coming out. That's going to be amazing. Because a lot, if you really look at the two series made by them, um. Hell the Boss focused more on the Hell aspect, where I'm thinking uh, Has Been Hotel is going to focus more on the Angelic aspect, which I uh, find very interesting. Ah, uh, let me guess. Come to join the fight, have you? No need to deny it, friend. You're not the first to answer the Griffin's call. While he has lit a fire in every Algonican's heart, he's also inspired more than few Undarns to pledge themselves to the cause. And little wonder, the Garland won't stop until we're all under the yoke. Uh, God, this is going to be so painful to drink at Walker. When it's all fresh in your mind. Uh, Cinder Bobbit. I see you there, going around asking questions. Looking for the Griffin and his lot, I bet. Seems there's talk, there t the talk of little Agamiga these days. Folk wondering what he's about, what he's got in store for the Garlians. And what's under that mask of his, of course. Some say he hardly got a face, what with all the scars. Others reckon he's been marked for death by the Empire. And they send a bloody legion if they knew he was here. <laughs> Your guess is good as mine. Uh, I think that's... Yeah, Bob. <laughs> the resistance. Damn, if I know. It's not as if I'll be any use to them. <coughs> if you set store by all these tales of secret weapons, good luck to you. But I'm too old for the mask bedtime stories. This is our lot. Time we got used to it. Don't worry, I'm I'm trying to get through the story so I can liberate your lands next. I suppose I should ask what you learned, but I think I already know. Blah 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 blah. Hmm. 
This griffin seems to be the leader of a newly formed faction within the resistance. The mask. Yet, despite their growing popularity, no one seems to know much about them. Only that they are the most aggressively militant group to join the movement in recent memory. Indeed, many claim that commitment to the cause of Alpha's liberation is unrivaled. We can only we can but hope their revolutionary fever is never challenged in the channeled in the direction of a primal. Though I feel confident that this is the group which received the crystal shipments, yet we lack proof. Before taking action, I would speak with the settlement's leader to confirm my suspicions. I may have enlist his help while I'm about it. Given that you and Gombola were already acquainted, mayhap it would be best if you took lead, shall we? Uh, this way. But yeah, so I'm looking forward to the Has Been Hotel episodes. Um, I'm also looking forward to more Hell of a Boss episodes too. Need to catch up on those. Uh, much as it please, as, <clears throat> as much as it pleases me to see you again, Cinder. I can't help but wonder if I should be worried. I hear you and yours have been asking questions. Blah, 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 blah. The Griffin. I, I know of him. As do we all. He and his mask have become a leading faction within the Resistance. Though this was suspicious at first, given his... Selective ways. He quickly proved himself a cosmetic. Cos ah. Uh, proved himself a cosmetic and capable commander. Men are drawn to his passion and his vision. They truly believe he has what it takes to lead them to victory. But even I can't help but admire the man for what he's accomplished. But I have not forgotten. Wilred. I was blind to the danger of his ambitions, and you were not. The Griffin will soon deliver a speech to our people at the sunken temple of Quam. Go see him with your own eyes. Weigh his words with your own heart. How convenient. How convenient. Tis but a pity Bancred is not here to join us. You two go ahead. You two go ahead. I shall stay behind and wait for him. Turns out I got to watch it, and I have to say, pretty darn good. Story, gameplay wise, has it begun? Uh, begun already? I hear voices coming from within. Cutscene time. Sisters, 20 years ago, 
Alamigo, our home, was claimed by the Galian Empire. In our haste to overthrow the King of Ruin, we turned a blind eye to our foes in the north. With our glorious revolution, we but laid a path for a new tyrant to succeed the old. And when confronted with our failure, we fled. Not a day goes by that I do not think of those we left behind. Think of them and feel ashamed. And I know each and every one of you feels the same. We abandon them, our own flesh and blood, to labor till their backs gave in and their breath gave out, building the twisted steel ramparts which now mar our once majestic mountains. If you look closely, you can kind of see a little bit of the face or the jawline, so you could probably tell that it who it is if you look closely. But I'm not going to do some deep analyzation for that right now. We abandon them, the brave and true, to fight and die for their country. Or worse, to be conscripted and sent off to rob another poor bastard of his home. We abandon them, the meek and powerless, to bow and scrape when the Galleons pass, to sully themselves that they might live to see another day of misery. The Black Wolf may be dead, but a new Imperial Viceroy reigns in Alamigo now. A beast, not a fraction as merciful. You all know the Aeorzean Alliance will do naught to oppose him. For all their promises and platitudes, they will not act if there's no profit in it. Only we can free our brothers and sisters from the Empire's tyranny, my friends. Only we have the courage to stand and fight. They have imprisoned us. They have enslaved us, and they have murdered us, but no more! Blood demands blood, and the Garleans shall pay for every drop they have spilt upon our lands! This I promise you, for we have a power within us, my friends. A power befitting our pride, our righteousness. Only join us, and we shall grant you the means to unleash it, and together we shall see the Alamegan standard raised over the mountains of Gear Arbania once more! A power befitting their pride. Not at all ominous, that. Oh, very ominous. Very ominous indeed. Wait, is that... What are you two doing here? You're alive! I could ask you the same thing. Well, well, this is quite the surprise. If you see what I see, if you feel as I feel... Might I suggest we continue this conversation in more agreeable surroundings? For it is not strength of arms that will win this battle, but strength of heart.
words cannot express how glad I am to see you both alive and well. And you, though it's pretty obvious you and Cinder would be fine. The Crystal Blades never had a realistic chance of capturing any of the Scions, divided as they were and distrusted by the better part of the Eosia. If you truly believe that, forgive me. What exactly have you two been doing all this time? Repaying a favor. After the banquet, we had no choice but to flee Uda, and we would not have been able to do so without the aid of some old friends from the resistance. That's right. They smuggled us out of the city. They smuggled us out of the city, and sheltered us in Little Alamigo, all at great risk to themselves. Obviously, we couldn't let that go unacknowledged, so we offered to help them out with their operations for a while. When we learned the Scion's exploration that Loruto has severed, served all ties with the Crystal Braves, and General Bond had been reinstated, we resolved to make contact. But having long since discarded our link pearls as a precautionary measure, our options were rather limited. To make matters more complicated, we were embroiled in a delicate operation at the time. We me with little choice but to entrust a letter to our courier. I gather from your puzzle expressions, however, that you never received it. Did I receive a letter and not say anything about it? To be honest, we thought this might happen. While the masks are happy to let the refugees spread the world in, in the community, they're pretty strict about communications with outsiders. Oh, and we also heard rumor that Griffin doesn't want us meddling in his affairs. Griffin mistrusts the Scions of the Seven Dawn. Curious. It is well known that we are no friends to Gollumald. One would think the man we saw teaching all and Sundry to join his cause would welcome our support. Ah! Ah! I should say that 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 man you saw was not, in fact, the Griffin, but an impersonator, a talented rabbit browser to boot. It would not surprise me if he were responsible for the majority of these public appearances. But as you have gathered, the Griffin is an extremely cautious and distrustful man who has made every effort to conceal his identity. Even when we participated in a raid under his direct command, we were not permitted to approach him. It's hard to know what the mask of it all. The sincerity, the impersonations, the mask. What? What? It's not as if I'm making all of you wear one. Mine only covers half my face. It's completely different. Anyway, when we heard the tale Griffin was due to give a little speech, we thought it might be a good opportunity to get a better sense of the man behind a... Uh, to get a better sense of the man. For all the good it did us. And now you have the whole t of it. But tell me, what promoted you to take an interest in the Griffin? Blah 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 blah. Summoning? You're not serious. I can't believe it. The resist the resistance would never even entertain such a ridiculous plan. But the Griffin Well the man is an enigma and I can't say with any confidence what he might, what he would or would not do. What I can say, however, is that the speech we heard today was not the first to make reference to a power capable of defeating the Empire. The masks have made such claims of late. To conf I confess 
I have assumed it to be more bluster, but in the context of shipping, the shipments in which you spoke, it is not impossible they're alluding to a primal. Whatever it is, we'll find out together. And, and, and if anyone tries to stop us, they'll answer to me. That's indeed, indeed, that is, assuming you'll have us? The more the merrier. As you suspect, the Griffin is indeed plotting a summoning a primal. We must need obtain confirmation, which there is yet time to act. To that end, I propose we question his double. Given his role as the group de facto mouthpiece, I should not be surprised if he wore one of Griffin's close associates. And while he may not be aware of the most sensitive details, he can probably tell us the mask plans in broad strokes. Like the man who he impersonates, however, he is wary of outsiders. He will not expose himself without suitable incentive. My plan is as follows. You and Alcano will pose as adventurers fallen on hard times. Inspired by his words to take up arms for a noble cause, Yada and I, as members of the Resistance, will recount tales of your past achievements and testify as to your usefulness in the struggles ahead with, with our enthusiastic, enthusiastic assurances still ringing in his ears. He will decide to welcome you in, per in person, and we will arrange a meeting. You will need... To look the part that we might manage to serrate until we have him concerned, cornered. At least here, this would be enough to purchase suitable garments for Taboot and have him rub a respectful amount of dirt on them for good measure. Any questions? That seems simple enough. Thank you, and with that, Cinder, let us be off. And I'm going to take a quick break here. Uh, I will be right back. So, while we, while I go take care of some, getting some water, and staying very well hydrated. We'll all teleport to our little out of go. So let's go.
And we're back. Now let's go see some more Griffin. Is he bottom or top? Oh, he's bottom. Eh, you want to buy what? I don't know what you're up to, but I want no part of it. Well, you're the ones with the gill, seeing as you're friends with Papa Nemo. There, two inch and slots for the both of you. Tailored and uh, treated to your taste. But now off with you before Susan sees us again. Rose make it the man, they say. Right. I will go change and see you at the spot. Marked on our maps. Oh, God, we gotta... This is embarrassing. My nice, my nice Power Ranger armor, and now I have to wear this. Look at us, a pair of down at heel adventurers seeking a chance to meet past the boys. Yes, this is. And now, we play the game. It looked more convincing if we, like, one of us was, like, napping. Sitting down instead of waiting. My thanks, comrades. You must be the esteemed adventurers of whom I've heard so much. I understand you have taken an interest in our cause. A great interest, you might say. Your words have certainly made quite an impression on my friend and I. The Resistance has long, and some would say wisely, avoided open engagements with the Garleans, but you and yours seem confident against the world in arms. I can only assume you have good reason to be so bold. Why, one might even think you were planning to summon a primal. Foot in mouth, Alpha No. Because that would do much to explain the sizable ship. I'd like to hear more about the Griffin. The real Griffin. Your performance earlier didn't fool us. Ah, the famous scions of the Seventh Dawn. I should have known better than to think I could conceal the truth from you lot. You are right. I am not the Griffin. But I speak with his voice, 
and it was at his BS that we procured those crystals. You are wrong, however, if you think that we procured them to summon a primal. We used them to reach an accord with the Amalja. In exchange for crystals to summon their god, they will aid us in the fight for Alamegan liberation. You've got to be joking. Have you gone completely mad? When people find out you helped the Lizardmen summon Ifrit, they'll turn on the resistance. Alamigo will never be free! This isn't a fairy tale, girl. We don't have the luxury to play at being honorable heroes. It's because the likes of you wouldn't sully your saintly hands that Alamigo's been under the yoke for the past 20 years. But the Griffin won't stand for it, and neither will we. We're ready to do whatever it takes. What proof do you have of this arrangement with the Amalja? I like, like Bob Wheels, like, what proof you got well, this? Aside from a lack of crystals, none. But the beastmen have a great big pile of the things if you fancy looking. You might want to hurry, though. It'll not be long before they summon their god. Search our camp if you don't believe me. We have naught to hide. If there is a cache to be found, Ida and I will find it. <coughs> Looks like I'm gonna go kill Efrid real quick. Then let us be off. Are you perchance the warrior of light? Yes. Aye. I thought so. You should know that a great many who have joined us did so because you saved them. Because you showed them that one brave woman can make a difference. You saved me too once. Helped a friend over in Quarry Mill make some medicine I needed. But that was a lifetime ago. On behalf of my brothers and sisters, I thank you. You gave us hope where there was none. Courage and strength when all was lost. We shall not squander your gift. I know that look, Ida, and I do not like it. You cannot seriously be contemplating taking up arms with that band of cutthroats. I... I just... See, having that moment... I understand where Ida's coming from, though. She's... She's having that moment of... My people have been under this torment for so long. And now that we have something that could really put us on even footing it becomes a question of morals of yes summoning a primal is wrong but if it gets us allies when nobody else has been willing to help us do the ends justify the means and this is a conundrum that I love seeing certain characters go through because it hold on it makes them <clears throat> realize have actual character growth as a person as they try to figure out should I do the right thing which is the harder path or could I take this way this super easy way or what seems to be the easy way and might have a come out and come out with, on the same side but with greater losses if the griffin and his men have their way it is only a matter of time before the situation in alamigo comes to a head
Your homeland's future teeters on a knife edge, and any reckless action, however small, could have irrevocable consequences. He's not wrong. Like I said, it's the... Are you willing to push this envelope even though you know the envelope is already close enough to a fire that it might just catch light? You mustn't lose sight of that, Ida. When the time comes, we must all make our choices, but we must do so in full possession of the facts. Now, let us away. There is work to be done. This is what I like about Paul Mimo. He's trying to keep Ida on that path of, yeah, I know you're under I know you want your home freed. I know you want the your people set free and everything made right. But right now, if you do this their way, you're basically going to do your people in the long term and maybe even in the short term. And he's telling her, let's make sure we have all the information before we start jumping to conclusions and start and making sure we understand the situation, the full situation before going in with both feet. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. <clears throat> Koi Mill, he said. Do you remember? Forgive me. You can't be expected to recall every name and face and besides. Not as it matters. I have long in mind how you live in the present, how you focus on the problems at hand and always keep moving forward. So let us keep moving forward together, Cinder. We must find and secure those crystals. This is no time for looking back. Ooh. I'm glad I ate because seeing all this food is just gonna make me hungry later. One life for one world. If we take the Griffin's double at his word, then the crystals are now somewhat within the Harak. Ready to be put to use by the announcer. And we must surprise Alize of all we have learned. I will join you both in a little you both in a little out of mingle after I have changed. Haha. <laughs> it's just like I change. I just had to re-equip. If anyone gets that reference, I'm happy. If no one gets that reference, I am going to be a very, very sad life. Oh god, I'm calling something. I mean, flip to the holiday. Oh, there's Sacred finally. Now that they could have time on that, may I have you consider your latest findings? Blah 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 blah. You mean to tell me that while we were worrying ourselves sick, Yada and Eva, Yada and Palomino were here all along? Oh, you still are with me, And also angry. Mainly angry, I think. As for the crystals, what choice do we have? We can't very well leave them. For all we know, they could be preparing to come at if it even as we speak. We must make for Zakra. Without the rain. Agreed. If there is nothing else to discuss, let us depart at once. go forth in accordance with the Griffin's plan. 
players gather to achieve their mass. Their marks on a steam rise to the flame. Hair long, the curtains are rise. And the drama of which I am all there. Gods, forgive me. Never shall we know, know it's like a cat. I confess, I expected a warm green, but we must not seem to conclude it. Not to upgrade the bowels. Be ready to engage the enemy at any moment. If you would make any final preparations, pray do so now. I shall await your signal. Upon proceeding to the bowl of arrows, several cutscenes were playing sequence. It is recommended you set aside a significant time to read these scenes in their entirety. This isn't right. The Amalja would never leave this place so poorly guarded. Not willingly, no. My favorite beast guys. We got massacred. Why do they get two tanks? <laughs> Ah, the saviors of Eorzea. Slow as ever. By the Twelve, will you never learn? You know you're right. Mayhap it is time for a change of tack. Killing primals, tormenting beastmen, hastening the birth of a new god. It's all a bit much, isn't it? And frankly, we don't have the leisure to do it. But killing the warrior of light, on the other hand, that would soon plunge Eorzea into chaos. Take your best shot. <laughs> one life for one world. A fair exchange. Wouldn't you agree? Even though you... Lest you forget, you've more than one opponent. Carbuncle! Defend me! <laughs> Got that thing! I sense you will offer more than mere target practice, unlike your sister. Ooh. Alize! Focus, boy. Alize got her own stuff. Give her a second. Did... Did I not tell you, Alphano? Now. My brother was always the clever one. While my talents lay elsewhere. Her talents lie in combat. And thus, Red Mage Alize was born. If you would dare to stand against us, to destroy all that we hold dear, then you shall die by my sword. Now that's what I'm talking about. Let's finish this. Okay, do I have food? 
Yes, I do. Dude, let me in. <laughs> This is how I get This the power of the echo? Bring it more. I forgot how to do it. Oh, I forgot. Oh, God. It ends now. What? Now it's time. The chains. Who do you think? God, you snake. You would betray us as well. He that holdeth fast unto his convictions shall never count betrayal amongst his crimes, though all the world may call him villain. My path is unchanged, my creed sacrosanct. This I believe, but say, warrior of darkness, and speak true, what dost thou believe? That rendering up the souls of thy world in service to the rejoining will grant it salvation? Nay. By the twelve, Oriange. You have. It's not that hard. It wasn't that hard. It, you know it. Everything about it said Oriange from the beginning. If you knew. This is not a revelation to me. Mine apologies, Master Alfino. That the brightest light might shine, duty did compel me to walk in darkest shade. You sweet fool. I was almost willing to believe you had turned against us. I didn't. <laughs> and not just because I played this already. Because we've seen this before. I I've expect a full before. explanation when this is over. For now, may I assume you have turned your cloak for the last time? Uh... Thou mayest, my lady. At least for now, anyway. By thy leave. Even odds, then. No matter. 
We'll crush the lot of you in one fell swoop! Understood. Hearken to me. We only have one chance. Channel your ether into my blade that I might strike before the mage casts his spell. I cannot do it alone, but together, together we can defeat them. Well, he's started channeling already, so let's talk more channel. Ready, they come!
Alize, are you hurt? No, I just gave her too much. <coughs> I gave her too much of my potent evil. A touch dizzy, but otherwise fine. Thank you. And there you have it. Our friend is too stubborn to die. <laughs> I'm too angry and depressed to die. <laughs> We are far from finished. Or have you never considered how we came to this world? Uh, no, I considered it. Crystals? You mean, like the Asians? Just so. As the Asians flee under the rift twixt plains with crystals of darkness, so did these warriors come hither with crystals of light. Eloquent, as always. Aye, like the Asians, we too are beyond death. You cannot defeat that which is eternal. Yes, we can. <laughs> Wait! Wait. Wait. Such methods as the Asians employ require the renunciation of the flesh. You... You would have had to... At long last, you see. To save our world, we gave our lives. We were just adventurers trying to make our way. And our job here, a favor there, we never aspired to be warriors of light. But word of our deeds spread, and soon people were calling us heroes. They placed their hopes and dreams on our shoulders, and bid us fight for all that was good and right. We fought, and we fought, and we fought, until there was no one left to fight. We won! And now our world is being erased from existence. We did everything right. Everything that was asked of us, and still, still it came to this. The Asians played you. <laughs> the Asians used you. 
made you martyrs. What? Ask yourself. I see him now. What do you mean? This is the sad thing, is the Ashens used them to get what they wanted. They basically said, oh yeah, destroy all evil, your world will be safe, it'll be happy. But the thing is, there is a balance to these things. And this is the thing we, we learned through the story is, there's a balance to Aether that if you tip it into one favor too much, that Aether becomes the dominant Aether. They were the warriors of light. Thus, when the light, when their power became too much, it started pushing away the dark and everything else until light was all that was left. You of all people should understand. We cannot, we will not falter. We brought our world to the brink of destruction. And now we must save it. <clears throat> I've died before, Arbut. I'm not afraid to die again. No matter how many times we fall, we must rise and carry on the fight for those we left behind. Power Ranger moment here. <laughs> to have known the depth of sorrow and embraced the highest sacrifice, nonetheless, Master Louis Soir, guide my hand, I pray you, as fate's thread spinneth upon this most capricious spindle. Quickly, thou must needs invoke the power of thy crystal. What is this place? Welcome to the etheric sea. <laughs> Such pain. Such sorrow. Oh my dear children. It can't be. Mother Heidelin, hearken unto your children's plea. From two worlds do we gather, and from two worlds do we offer a bounty of light. In this desperate hour we do beseech your intercession. We beg an audience with the word of the mother, with your chosen Minfilia. Your cries go not unheard nor your sacrifices unnoticed. Though many are lost, there are those we can yet save, whom I can yet save.
Minfilia. Blessed children of the first. The light of your world hath grown blinding in its radiance. But it is not yet absolute. I will hie me to your world, and there take unto myself the light which riseth even now to drown it, as darkness once did drown another. Now you deign to answer our prayers? I will suffer this farce no longer! <laughs> She's just like... <laughs> Still. As the Asians must serve as instruments of Zodiac's will, so too must others carry out the will of Hydaelyn. But for the boon you have granted her, she has grown strong enough to set me free, that I might serve as her emissary. Your suffering, your sacrifice, your supplications. She has heard all. We will not let the first fall to light. That's why she's sending me. <laughs> we just have to wait another expansion before we can get there. <laughs> Thank you, Uriange, for bringing everyone here. It fills my heart with joy to look upon the faces of my friends once more. In taking you unto her bosom, I knew that Hydaelyn had bequeathed to you a sliver of her grace, granting you strength long sought. And in treating with the Asians, I learnt of a star like unto our own, a doomed world of fallen heroes, in whom I glimpsed ourselves, the first. Full long did I search for a means to save this world, concluding at the last that the answer lay in the power of blessed crystals. And thus did I labor to set light against dark. Yet I knew from the beginning that this salvation would not come without sacrifice. For the instrument of the first's deliverance would of necessity be required to journey thither, there to remain, mayhap forever. You orchestrated all of this not to save her, but to send her away! There is no world without sacrifice. There is no victory without sacrifice. This? One life for one world. Such was the bargain, and you the coin, though it were not mine to spend. Have we not walked together in the light of the crystal, and at her bidding borne witness to the joys and sorrows of this land? Each and every one of you knows my heart. If this be the price I must pay, I pay it gladly. You would go alone then? My dearest Thancred, you who have ever watched over me, I am truly grateful for all you have done on my behalf, as would my father be. Your kindness, your compassion, your love. These are your gifts to me, and our gifts to them. Forming a bond which transcends time and space. Sometimes I forget you are not the child I once knew. 
make me proud. Long have I watched you from Hydaelyn's side, watched as you nurtured and kept safe the light of the dawn. The dark recesses of the world hide untold secrets and dangers. Thus do I entrust to you, Tupsumati. I pray you, keep to the path that you may never have need of it. Into the infinite storage box. It would seem the power of our crystals is all but spent. Perhaps, if there is naught else to be... Hear me, servant of Hydaelyn. If you would have us place our trust in you, then I would ask a favor. Take us with you. Take us home. We were blind to the truth once, so I tell you this, as one fool to another. Light, dark, it doesn't matter. What matters is how you choose to use them. We made our choice and you see what came of it, so please, forge a different path. Seize a better fate. Strange feeling. So many times have I watched you depart, my heart filled with worry. And ever did you return to me in triumph. Someday, when I have found a way to free this star from her sorrow, I promise you I shall repay the favor. Oh my god. It would seem we are in Southeast Benaran again. Ophelia's doing. No doubt. May the 12 speed her on her way. 
and the warrior of darkness too. I cannot help but wonder what await those weary, wayward souls as they gave their lives in order to travel to the source. Then in returning to the forest, would they not? Mayhap that it was their wish. <laughs> Forgive me, my thoughts were elsewhere, and if, when I know full well there is work to be done, the crystals, leave them to me, I will go back into Zarka to secure them. The Amazo will still be in dismay after the thrashing the warriors of darkness gave them. They are not right to notice a lone bard sulking about, but thank you. Don't have to do this, I know. I know I don't, but I want to. I will see you at the Rising Stones. I should go find Yada and Palomimo. They must have finished searching the mass camps by now. Not that it matters anymore. Be tired, Cinder. I know I am. If thou will permit me, my lady, I would ask a question. When didst thou become aware of my independent pursuits? When I saw you meeting with the warriors of darkness and the Ashen in white at the great library, I tried not to think the worst. You know the one to confide in others, so I knew that even were your Intentions poorer, you would not say the plan with us until you felt the time was right. But I cannot deny that a part of me feared that you have simply betrayed us. Would there have been another way? Know that I took no pleasure in deceiving thee, and that these sins will forever weigh heavy on my heart. I understand why you did what you did, though that you but sought to achieve the greatest good while afflicting the least harm. Not many would have the courage to take the, to make that choice. But even knowing what came of your actions, I find that I cannot condone them. I'm sorry. Cinder, forgive me, but I believe the day the events of the days have taken their toll on me. I should like to rest for a while. If thou wilt grant me leave, I'll We'll gladly escort thee unto a refuge of thine own choosing. Once my lady has regained her drink for strength, we shall join thee at the rising stones until then, warrior of light. Well met, Cinder. Up now. Said you would be joining us. Tis was seen that Griffin's double was telling the truth, and so far as we found, nothing resembling a sizable cast of crystal in the mass camp. Did you perhaps did you per chance find one in Zerok? Actually. The crystals, the filia, all of it, it's just... 
don't know what it, it is. I sympathize, Nita. Even now, I struggle to comprehend that which I saw. The only thing I can say with certainty is that I feel blessed to have been granted a final chance to speak with her. This bittersweet eye, but also affirming. Alphina, I believe it is past time y Yana and I rejoin the Scions. We have been away for far too long. Though I am loath to leave Griffin to his own devices, I feel our investigations would benefit from your more dispassionate perspectives, and I hope that we might in turn offer our own opinions on the challenges, on many challenges that you have faced in our absence. Gods, gods, it's been absolute ages, hasn't it? I can't wait to hear about everyone's adventures. Well, I became a Power Ranger. Or Common Rider, depending on who you ask. We should be glad to account them. And Tataru Tales may well surprise you. Yada. Yada. Raga be praised, it is you. Yada alive and standing before me. In the first I can hardly believe my eyes. I uh Oh come now, has it really been so long you don't remember me? I fought beside your father in the revolution. Oh, don't think less of her, friends. It's been twenty years since the but the resistance always welcomed us. They were always welcoming the old leader. They gave us hope. And young Yatha, most of all. I, Yona, was always full of fire. Ever the first to volunteer for a mission until the day she up and vanished. That is, there were, were rumors and we feared the worst. But here you are, alive and well. Look, nearly a day older. Oh, <laughs> what can I say? I'm sorry for running off like that. I'm marking, making y'all worry. It's a long story, but you see, I got involved with my friends here. The oh, science. Oh, sorry. We're still the circle of noise back then, right? Hey. Anyway, I'm going to come back and tell you. But we were all very secretive stuff and at the time, and uh, as you can see, I'm completely fine. I know I got a lot to talk about, and we'll, we'll, but right now I gotta hurry back to our headquarters. My friends are expecting me. Very forgive her, it's been a long day for her, but I promise we will visit again at the first opportunity. Let us return to the Rising Stones. Else takes me for giving you that mask. Uh, let's see, we've been going for what? About an hour? Two hours. Um. Uh, Normally I would go about three, but I'm going to end it here for now. So, I've been me, you've been you. And this is going to be goodbye. Are they talking about the rising stones? Rising stones? Oh, they're talking about the ones in the middle. Okay. No, the rising stones is the ones in Raven's Toll and the and one. And then you got the walk, waking sands or walking sands.
Uh, let's see, we're going on. And what time is it? Uh, I guess I could go to at least 3:40. So. Wait, is this guy's thing bent? Hold on. I'm not the only one. Oh, free company play card. Okay, because I'm like, Bimbo? I'm like... Let's see... Tank, healer, crafter, gatherer. They focus on PvP, rage, trials, gun. I still don't know why they haven't gotten rid of Guild Hess. Because I don't think they really do anything for anyone anymore. Unless I'm missing something and they made like a, a more potent version of them but I don't know because I quite literally don't think they have a use anymore and then you got dungeons hardcore casuals leveling and roleplay <laughs> getting a little salsa a little saucer. Where the heck did that go? Okay. Oh, let's talk to some neighbors. You need to say a word, Cinder. I know. I know. Wherever she wanders, no matter how far she will be with us. And now I feel bad. <laughs> Welcome home, Cinder. I trust your journey was uneventful. You will be pleased to hear that Thancred has secured the crystals. He sent a word a uh, short while ago. Once he has delivered them safely to the Temple Knights, care, he will rejoin us here. We can declare this matter officially resolved. While awaiting your arrival, I took the opportunity to contact Yastola and Cryo and brief them on all that has occurred. I also requested that they return to the Rising Stone at their earliest convenience. Now that our lost friends have been found, it seemed neat to discuss the future. Yay, more cutscenes! Back in the solar. It's been too long since we were all together like this. Not since. Not since after Moon Breeder. Much has changed since then. We ourselves, most of all. Though not all who were lost could be gathered here today, we may take comfort in the knowledge that those who are not are carrying on the fight. While I am grateful to our friends in the North for their hospitality, it is isn't half good to be back. But, as Papalima rightly said, much has changed since we last stood here. The Scions of the Seventh Dawn are not as they once were, nor should we be. Our travels in the North brought us into contact with a host of fine and generous people, and their selfless deeds serve to show me that it is not lofty causes that should inform our actions. And I hope that the Scions might continue in this manner, as individuals driven by individual principles. Provided we all sincerely desire to work towards Eorzea's salvation, I believe the paths we follow to achieve it need not, and should not, be dictated by any single ideal. Companions bound by a common purpose, free to go whither they will. The idea is not without merit. Very well. I shall resume my research of the primals and the elder gods of Eorzea. Should anyone have need of my findings, you need only ask. I should be glad of your continued assistance. 
Yes, Lola, just stop doing well, those blasphemies. My main purpose in coming here was to see the signs of the seventh dawn restored and my dear friend found. Nevertheless, having involved myself in your struggles, I feel compelled to see them through to the bitter end. For Minfilia's sake. That is, if there are no objections. You will always be welcome here, Kryle. Uriangere, can we trust you to carry on your investigation of the Assians as before? Regardless of mine own desires, I am undeserving of your trust, having so villainously deceived you all. Now, now, I'll hear no more of that. It would be disrespectful of Minfilia's wishes. She entrusted matters here to us that we might protect this star and understand the truth which hides at her heart. Mayhap I can handle the former, but I think you far better suited to the latter. No? Very well. Then out of love for my Lady Minfilia and Moonbreeder both, this shall be my solemn charge. I should probably return to Thandalan to keep an eye on the resistance. There's still the matter of the Griffin and the Amalja, not to mention the new Imperial Viceroy. That little lot must be worthy of our attention, right? And what will you do, Alize? You know I have no great love for organizations and formalities. That being said, this new approach you propose is not wholly objectionable, and we've always got her to keep us from bickering. But I will suffer no titles. I am not here for House Leveur, nor to walk in Grandfather's shadow. A 
Upon that point, we see eye to eye. If it please you, you may think of me as but another comrade in arms. Well then, Alfie, I for my part shall see to the paperwork and the finances with my characteristic aplomb. I would not have it any other way, Tataru. And we mustn't forget you. What now for the warrior of light? I need to look into something. I forget, do we even get a question? Indeed. The path behind us was fraught with hardship, and the path before us will be no less unforgiving. But a new dawn shall break over the realm, and I see before me the faces of those who will deliver it. We've suffered the tragedies we've overcome. All of it has made us who we are today. Where we go from here, and what the future holds, only the Twelve know. But I know that we will find out together. One world's heroes are another world's villains. One world's loss, another world's gain. Where men go as one, there is life. And where there is life, My friends, if I may, I would ask that you entrust Tupsimati to me. Clouds gather upon the horizon, and as Master Louisois' disciple, I would keep it close at hand. Thank you. I shall guard it well. There is cause to hope. For every ending, every parting, 
marks a new beginning. Well done, brother. You may resume your normal duties and rejoin the others. The coming battle shall be our greatest yet, and I intend to stand with you all on that glorious day. True believers are so readily. I have given them everything they desire, all which they have prayed. I doubt you can say the same for your pawns. Get what, get what you wanted then? Was it all worth it in the end? There were some unexpected developments, but they were ultimately to our advantage. Be it. it Host to a sphere of light and dark, a world bequeathed of equilibrium is but a void in waiting, and a void is no use to my master. I shall follow her emissary with great interest. As for the pawns who you, whom you shall pay, they have delivered unto me a gift which I do now present to you. I told you we should have kept those. The eyes of myth. Many were the candidates considered, but by your deeds you have proven yourself the most deserving. A man of boundless rage and bottomless despair, and those in whose breast beats a heart for thirst for vengeance. Only you are fit to wield these eyes for will, will or for woe. So it was here all along. Oh, just you wait, my pretty. You and I are going to have so much fun. Treat, no surrender. And that's where we're going to call it today. Next time, we continue, we go to tidings from Giabania. I've been me. Well, this has certainly been a thing. I've been me, you've been you, and this is ta-ta for now. <laughs>